I want to talk to you about layers and I want to talk to you about limiting the rate of thermal energy transfer, which that's a question that a lot of people are getting wrong in the GCC because they're looking at a question where it's talking about thermal energy transfer, it's talking about heat conducting across a barrier and they're just saying, oh, it's a good insulator, isn't it? You need a lot deeper knowledge, a lot deeper understanding to get the marks in these new GCSEs. Two things to really hang on to is don't just say a good insulator, say thickness, extra thickness will limit the rate of energy transfer and also talk about layers, having extra layers will limit the rate of energy transfer. Whenever you're tackling the question about the movement of heat, I want you to always be thinking about thermodynamics one and two. They're the, the fundamental laws of how heat moves, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics one says that heat spreads out basically. Okay, it says that things will reach thermal equilibrium if they're left to themselves. So you are hotter than the surroundings. You have a higher temperature than the surroundings when you're in a cold place like Iceland. So you want to limit the heat from your body to the outside. And that's basically thermodynamics too, which says that heat moves from hot to cold. And there's something really important basically to understand is that there's no such thing as cold energy. So we can't really keep the cold out. We need to keep the heat in. And also thermodynamics too, when you did those cool cooling curves in your GCSE, when you maybe just took the temperature of some hot water cooling, that was about it being a higher rate of heat transfer when the temperature difference was greater. So something to really hang on to, okay? The higher the temperature difference, the greater the rate of heat transfer. That's thermodynamics too. But you could also be thinking this about your energy stores. Essentially, you have a high thermal energy store and you want to stop the transfer of that to the surroundings, okay? You wanna stop the thermal energy store of the surroundings from increasing. And you're gonna do that by stopping either heat transfer by radiation, which is um, by waves basically, and you see the inside of my outer shell is actually silvered to stop thermal energy transfer by radiation, by infrared radiation. And also by particles, which is a good old conduction, convection. It won't be enough to get a mark anymore in a new GCSE to say, well, that stops conduction, or that limits conduction. You have to go into a bit more detail about that. We really want to read about layers and thicknesses, and we also want you to be using the term, instead of insulator, instead of good insulator or good conductor of heat, we want to talk about thermal conductivity. Everything has a different thermal conductivity. Every material has a different thermal conductivity. So air has a very low thermal conductivity and layers are about trapping that air inside to limit the heat transfer by particles. Adding more layers always will reduce the rate of thermal energy transfer. The layers are also important because it's important to be able to take them off or, or loosen them or use like this pit vent system to be able to actually keep yourself dry because evaporation causes cooling and if, when you get wet that water will evaporate and it will use the heat from your body to evaporate. That will take heat away from your body and that will cool you down. And this is why a good quality base layer is important because you want it to be able to get rid of the sweat. And high tech materials, which maybe you'll study actually in your chemistry, is all about being able to allow sweat to leave your body, leave the, the jacket so that you are not wet inside, so that you are not evaporating that water, so that you are not losing heat that way. But uh, you need to stay dry when you're outdoors because evaporation causes cooling. It's a really, really useful thing for us in a lot of situations, but um, it's really bad if you then get in an exposed area, so a really, really windy area, you're going to find that uh, you get very cold very quickly as the wind evaporates the water on you and takes some of the heat of your body away with it. important to have the full waterproofs and keeping those layers underneath dry because if those layers underneath get wet then you are going to be evaporating that sweat with the heat of your body and in doing so it's going to take the heat away there's going to be a more of a thermal energy transfer away from your body i guess my hands will dry pretty quickly when i get back on the bus though. this is a cross section of the pipe they use I think eight kilometers of pipe to get to Reykjavik and it takes eight hours for the hot water to get to Reykjavik starting at 85 degrees here at the power station and just losing two degrees Celsius because of all this insulation because of all these layers because of the stick insulation with a low thermal conductivity.